Hey everyone, so great to be with you again today, Andy here. I just want to share a thought that's come across my mind uh, as of late when I think through life. I want you for a moment to think about somebody who you find at times to be judgmental. I want you to think of somebody at times who you think doesn't put others ahead of themselves as much as maybe they could or should. I want you to think of somebody at times that is a little bit selfish or, you know, is not the greatest example to other people. And now that you have that person in mind, I want you to ask this question. Did any of us dare to think of ourselves? It's really easy for us to, to see faults and injustices in other people, but when it comes to ourself, we're often quick to dismiss or justify or come up with reasons why it's different for us. We know that there's no such thing as a perfect person. We all um, have our struggles, we all have our faults, and hopefully you're doing better than you were last week or yesterday, but we all struggle. I wanna to read to you a passage from 2 Samuel chapter 12, it's the first few verses, and it says this. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said, there were two men in one city, the one rich, the other poor. The rich man had a great many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb which he bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and his children. It would eat of his bread and drink of his cup and lie in his bosom. It was like a daughter to him. Now the traveler came to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take from his own flock or his own herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. Rather, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger burned greatly against this man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, surely this man who has done this deserves to die. He must make restitution for the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and had no compassion. Nathan then said to David, you are that man. We know from previous accounts that David had become king and he really had access to anything he wanted. And yet he committed adultery, took another man's wife and covered up by having her wife's <clears throat> husband put to death. And yet when he was confronted with the story with di different words or language put on it, he saw the fault, he saw the guilt, and he thought that that person should be punished, but he wasn't willing to acknowledge that he was that person. Or at least he was trying to hide it from the rest of the world. You know, the book of Romans, and I'm paraphrasing for the sake of time, says that where sin abounds or where it's prevalent, grace abounds all the more. But for the fact that I have grace, I don't just keep on sinning because it's there. Later in the book of Romans, uh, Paul even says that the things that I, they, what I want to do when I set these goals and things, I often I can't do them. And that doesn't mean we stop setting those bars, but we're bound to not hit some of them. We're bound to sometimes make mistakes. He says the things that I, I don't want to do, I end up doing. I understand that, that all of us are on a journey, but the more that I understand grace, the more that I look into who God is, the more I understand that I need to show grace to other people. I have faults, I have sin issues, I make mistakes, I treat people unfairly at times. But the more I understand how God has forgiven me and gives me grace, the more I see that we need to give grace to other people, that we need to look at people in our lives with unjudgmental eyes. The truth is, is that God knows what's going on in other people's lives, but it's not our job to step in all the time. Jesus often spoke to the crowds about things that were going on around him. Some of the things that were going on, there was a group called the Essenes, and their viewpoint was that they just basically took off, tried to live pure, holy lives, but they just abandoned society, said we don't want to be around anybody who's going to stumble or fall. The Pharisees were another group who tried to do everything right and they set all these rituals in place and ways to do it, but then they held people under such a weight of condemnation and guilt and sin when they couldn't live up to it or they were unwilling to, to do some of these things and they felt good about themselves for doing it. And Jesus over and over and through his words teaches us that, that neither of those are the goal that he wants. Our goal is to love people that we come to them in grace, looking for understanding, seeking relationships, seeking to look at one another and say, this is what I've learned about who God is. And my understanding is that the more we come into contact with the real 
Jesus, when we come into contact with the God of the Bible who is gracious, people will be drawn to change their ways. And it won't have to be necessarily taught or told every little thing, but just naturally things will happen. I look at it this way, when my kids, when I'm impatient or I'm you know, struggling with them, and then I ask them to do things, sometimes they do it out of fear of getting in trouble. Sometimes they don't want to stress me out because they know that I'm stressed from other things. But when I spend time with them and I show them I love them and I'm gracious towards them and all these things, and then I ask them, hey guys, can you help me with this? Or would you be willing to do this? They're much more apt to do things. And I think it's the same for human, mankind. When we come into contact with a God who is gracious and loving, and we see him for who he really is, we begin to want to put other people first. We want to begin, we become more thankful by nature. I ask you today, stop looking at other people with, with eyes that would maybe condemn, but rather look and, and ask, am I that man? Do I share similar traits? Do I mess up the same way? Because when we understand that we need grace, we often are much more capable of giving grace. Be blessed today as you think through these thoughts. Have a great day.